WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Views expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we're the ones who've encouraged you all along since the beginning of the get-go to like and share them on your favorite social media and with all your friends and neighbors because it's time to get healthy and think healthy and be healthy. It's time for Joanne's World of Nutrition with the one and only Joanne Seeger. There could be two of me out there. You don't really know that it's the one and only. There could be two. <laughs> there, there were two Cliff Desmonds at one time. See? That's what I mean. I was it named could after be my dad. Too. I'm a junior. <laughs> <laughs> well, good There's morning, everyone. And only Earth Angel. Oh, oh, I love that. Now everyone's like, who is that? Who's talking? That is my wonderful guest today, Dr. Christopher Allison. If anyone's been in the store, they know Chris and I have been buddies for a long time and working professional partners, and he is incredible, and we have an amazing show for us today. So, one, I want to thank you for spending some time with us this morning, and we're going to start with some breath work. So how are you doing, sir? Can you count to five this morning? You uh, feeling good? See. You uh, feeling I, strong? I'm feeling good enough to be able to count to. What would I have to count to today? Five. Just oh, five. Oh, that's an easy one. All right, Chris, one. what about I you? Can, can you that. Can you handle five? I can handle five. All right, everyone. So I want you to all just drop your shoulders, relax, and we have so much info to go over this morning. So we're going to just um, just take a couple rounds just to get us focused, to get us um, just really relaxed, and we can take in all this great info, okay? It's five, five, So let's five, exhale right. out any stress, anything that feels uncomfortable to us, and we're going to breathe. Breathe in for five and exhale for five, only using our nose. Okay. Okay, nose everybody ready? Nostrils only. Nostrils ready. only. Let it all okay. out first. All it out. And now let's begin the intake. One, two, three, four, five. Release. Two, three, four, five. Again. Two, three, four, five. Release. Two, three, four, five. Thank you. I feel better. Do you feel better, Chris? I feel marvelous. Thank oh, you so much. Oh, marvelous. I love it. You look marvelous. So, you look marvelous, <laughs> darling. All right. So today, Dr. Christopher Allison is going to discuss with us the brain and a lot of different cool parts about it and how to kind of check it out and understand it better. So he does come to our store and other stores in the Treasure Coast a couple times for us a month. And um, when he has time at the end of the show, maybe he can cover some of his locations in case you're not a local. Um, we support all his locations he goes to because um, he's just so incredible and he really gives you a wealth of information for a really economical price. Um, so I will um, say thank you for spending some time with me this morning, Chris. That's a pleasure. And thank you for such a wonderful introduction. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, you want to tell everyone, um, in case they missed the last show you were on with us, um, a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, my name is Christopher Allison. I go by Chris generally, and I'm a doctor of oriental medicine with some pretty strong training in something called functional medicine, which really has to do with optimized um, optimized way of looking at our body. So we take a look at what's going on, where the balances are, what's getting in the way of our balances, how do we remove pathogens, toxins, clear up the gut, get our brain working well, get our circulation well, so we can opti optimize our health, feel great until we're 100 years old if we're lucky enough to get there. And, um, and I enjoy it. It's a wonderful occupation, working with people, and uh, helping them to understand what's really going on so they can be the best that they can be. Yes, and I can definitely say everyone that leaves Chris's office, it's like they always have a smile. They're not leaving in fear or, or uh, worry. They yeah. always um, feel hopeful and, well, and that's really important. optimistic. That is important because honestly, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world out there. 
and people get afraid. I have this disease, I have that disease, but our bodies are amazing healing vessels. And uh, when we give our bodies the opportunity to heal, it everything lines up and things start to regenerate, including our brain. Right. Which, and, and I think that's why we get along so well, because we never put fear in front of our clients. Um, it's always just, uh, let's go on this journey, let's go for it, give 110%. And and whatever the other side presents, it presents, and you know, let's just be positive about it. I love that, right? We're just positive polys, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> well, when you consider the remarkable healing that we have available to us, I mean, we can actually rebuild virtually every part of our body from our bones to our muscles, to our heart, to our cardiovascular system, and even our brain, which, you know, up until recently, people thought, you know, you're born with a brain, and when the brain starts to fail, boy, you're in trouble because we can't make any more brain. But we know now we create an environment that does support neuronal growth, does support stem cell activation in the brain, and the brain can regenerate quite well. All right. So I love everything you're saying, but I want to, like, keep it really basic for the show. So you said um, some words like neuronal pathways and uh, stems and stuff like that. Can we um, just go to, like, the basics as far as the brain goes? Because a lot of people think, okay, this is my brain, this is what I was born with, and I'm stuck with it. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like this fixed object. Like, we used to think of the skeletal system. Could you kind of give, like, a little biology lesson for the brain? Sure. Well, the brain is filled with neurons, and they're basically really, really fatty. As a matter of fact, our brains, if you take the water out of our brain and, neuro, and uh, neurological systems, so all the nerves that go to our muscles and everything that, that works in the body, um, you take the water out, and what you're left with is about 60% fat. And um, so um, it's very sensitive oils that are in our brain, and our, and our cell membranes also are fatty. So the kinds of fats that we have in our and our diet and the kinds of fats we help our body build with really do make a difference. And since they are very delicate oils and fats that are in our brain, we have to make sure that if there's any inflammation that could damage the fats or create uh, any inflammation, that we take care of those inflammatory pathways, which could include things like gut barrier issues, food sensitivities, toxins that are all over our environment in the United States, and um, parasites, fungus, yeasts, and a number of other things that get in the way of our ability to transmit energy through the nerves and um, will end up making us feel foggy and dislocated in our lives and kind of miss, well, what do I walk into this room for anyway? So. <laughs> right. I know, and it gets a little scary because everyone's talking now about, you know, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, right. and all these conditions. You know, everyone seems to know someone now that has the condition, and people are really terrified about it. Yeah, and it, it is scary. There's no doubt right. about it. And, you know, it's becoming more and more and more prevalent in the United States. Not nearly as much in the rest of the world because, you know, as I've been looking at what's been going on in the United States, I used to think, you know, we live in a really clean country. I mean, the air looks clean. And uh, compared to where I grew up, you know, Boston, <laughs> I grew up near Boston and just living in Boston was the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes a day when I was young. <laughs> and now I look out there and the, and the cities are clean. And so I just assume that everything is clean and the government is there to take care of us and make sure that there's no chemicals in our food or the air or the water. And that really isn't the case. So what's happening is we are being exposed to all of these toxins and they are creating a situation where our immune system and detox pathways are all ramped up to take care of these toxins that we're exposed to. You know, and, um, and it's really, it's a challenge. And I, I talk to a lot of people who travel and uh, people will go to Europe. You know, they may be having a hard time with their weight here. They feel a little foggy. Their energy is low. They go to Europe and they eat everything. They're just taking in the whole experience. And when they come home, there's like, my goodness, I feel great. I ate everything. All the things that I'm not supposed to eat here, I ate there. And, it, and I lost weight and I feel great. And when they start eating those same foods here, all of a sudden, those same situations come back. Oh, I can't think straight. I'm tired again. I'm starting to gain weight. Yeah. And it really is, um, it's an inflammatory immune exposure uh, relationship to the food and the environment. And uh, 
Yep. So. Well, and I have in my office that when you work there, I'm sure you've noticed a big poster that says about all the toxicity. I shouldn't say all, probably 10% of our toxin exposure that we have daily through fragrance, fragrances, cosmetics, uh, clothing material, furniture, you know, just the off gassing of a lot of things, the glyphosate. And so, yeah, yeah it's, it's mold yeah. exposure. Yeah. It's just... Mold and fungus <laughs> exposure. And yeah. which, you know, <clears throat> when, when, our, when we are in really good shape, and our detox pathways are open and we are our, our mitochondria which are those little energy organelles that make electricity so that we can do all the things that we do when they're all working optimally and we're exposed to some mold it's like oh, it's no big deal we can handle it just fine when you add up all the affronts that we have that joanne was just mentioning they add up to the point where we just can't seem to deal with all of the toxic exposures that we have and so, um, in part, I think, because we tend to live in a more sedentary environment. Most people, they sit at desks and uh, they're doing computer work, they're a screen time, they're watching movies. And hardly anybody I know really enjoys going out there and doing exercise. <laughs> You know, some people do it like um, gardening is great. You get yeah. up, you get down, you get so grounded yeah. with the earth. You're getting actually literally electrons as you're sticking your hands in the dirt. Yep. And um, so that helps. But um, we really do get to move our bodies so that we can move the nutrition through our blood into our into our cells and then pull all the metabolic waste or because every cell in the body is alive and they're all individual little organisms living their life and um, so they're breathing and respirating and kicking off toxins too so we need to be able to get the toxins from our natural metabolic waste process out of our body and that takes movement it takes good food it takes food that doesn't have toxins in it so that we can and food that has plenty of nutrition um, and that's i think part of the benefit when people travel from the United States to other countries, I mentioned, hey, do you notice the bread tastes different over there? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's Absolutely. great. The, all the food just tastes like it's supposed to taste. <laughs> and that literally is because those plants are healthier because they're living in healthier soils with the funguses and the bacteria and the amoebas and the, all the things that make the soil alive so that the root structure can then be alive and pull the nutrition out of the soil into the plants and it tastes so good and they we just don't have that here which is really a shame which we don't you know, so it's it's as if even if we're eating a healthy diet what we would call a healthy diet in the united states we still really get to supplement well chris it's funny because um my guest last week i have him on each month and he mentioned that in california there's this new bakery that's by his home that they bring imported grain in uh -huh. and they crack it right there and make them to order the bread and he says he hasn't had american bread for 30 years right. and now he's having this and he's not gaining any weight and exactly. he's just like loving it like he kept talking about it on the show and really with so passion good. <laughs> and i was kind of salivating a little because i know you and i sometimes go to the euro market and jensen on right. us1 for the Love imported yep for the imported bread so it is called so for listeners euro market is that what it's called euro food i think it's euro, euro food. food okay so it's right next to hobby lobby so if you are local across the street from yep. treasure coast mall yep right across the street from treasure coast mall euro foods um chris turned me on to it it has some really great imported products um, but the imported bread is delicious makes your belly feel good and again you don't get that toxic exposure i do talk about that a lot on the show chris that if you're going to have something you know, at least avoid the chemicals that can be seen with your eyes. You know, sometimes we can't control the things that are unseen, like the glyphosate and, and like you said, mold exposures. But if you see chemicals on a label, then yeah, at least start there where avoid those and maybe make some homemade bread, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, <clears throat> and I hate to say it. Okay, say it. No, I'm going to okay. have to say it. Oh, but, no. <laughs> but, um, they're, the wheat that we have in this country, it really isn't wheat. And uh, one, of, one yeah. of the things that makes the, the breads around the rest of the world, and particularly in Europe, so much better is, is that the same grains they had a couple of thousand years ago 
is the same grain that they're using now. They are leavening, and it's relatively low gluten grain, and they leaven it or rise it or ferment it for a good solid eight hours, which really reduces the amount of gluten that's in it. In the United States, we have a company, it's a very ethical company, very humanistic company called Monsanto, those greedy bastards. And um, they have modified the wheat, crossbred it. It's not actually genetically modified, but it's crossbred to the point where it's a very, very high gluten grain, and then they spray Roundup on it. So when we're eating, and they don't leaven it appropriately, it's artificially leavened the breads here in a very, very short period of time. So it's, it ends up being a product with very high gluten, with chemicals in it, and it triggers an immune response in so many people. And so yeah. I noticed for myself, I have been gluten sensitive for a while. And, um, and I, can, I can eat the European breads pretty well, but even those, if I eat a lot of them, I'm still gonna react. And that's in part because my immune system has been triggered. So like in, in Europe and other countries where people live a healthier, cleaner lifestyle with good soils and good healthy foods and a relaxed lifestyle. So in Europe, they take, they take time for lunch, they eat leisurely they're they have social contact and oh, yes. all of that makes such a big difference in the way that we experience life in the united states there's so much stress and things to do and all these activities that we have to do and we often barely take vacations yeah. and vacations and and develop healthy relationships with other people and um and so that takes our autonomic nervous system or that automatic nervous system the fight or flight and the calming down part and so many people are running in that fight or flight and it and it just triggers our immune system to run hard and fast and look for all of these things that could potentially hurt us in in a lot of people are overreacting to the chemicals and the proteins that are in the food when i say proteins i'm just like you know everybody has probably heard of gluten so that is a protein and that that is a protein in a family of proteins called lectins and so when our immune systems are stable and our lifestyle is calm and we are in a peaceful way of living, then we can eat these things and they're generally okay. And that's why most of the world doesn't have much of an issue with it. But over here, our life is so hard and fast and our immune system is so triggered that we become sensitive to things that other country, people in other countries could eat with no problem. That's a great explanation. And I know you and I agree where some people believe, well, that's only affecting my stomach. Uh -huh. You know, it's only affecting, you know, like my stomach, my small intestine, my right. large intestine. And we try to get them to understand that, no, it is affecting the brain. And yeah. so um, if you can correlate how like these toxins are creating that brain fog and, a... and, and the hopeful part, the prevention <laughs> part too, because we, we said in the beginning of the show, we're all about hope and promise. So <clears throat> some food prevention tips, and then after uh, the break, then maybe we'll go over to how you can see these things and understand the brain better. Sound sure. good? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, the brain basically sits on top of our head. And it's <laughs> okay, inside, inside, of, yeah. inside of our head on top of wow. our body. And uh, it would be really easy to, to segment. And that's what, you know, the Western medical profession, they tend to like to segment things out, like our intestinal tract is our intestinal tract, and our heart is our heart, and our brain is our brain. And, uh, but the reality is everything is connected. And so when, uh, and even to the point where there's this, um, intestinal tract barrier or the gut barrier and that barrier is one cell thick and its job is to let food go into our bloodstream and keep the toxins that are in our gut in our gut so that we can eliminate them in the morning or several times a day if that if you do and um, but so many things get in the way of that intestinal tract barrier and how those little doors that open and close to let the food in and keep the toxins out how those little doors work so when we're under stress or if we're eating foods that we're sensitive to, those little doors get dysregulated, they open up, they let toxins into our bloodstream, those toxins are gonna filter around, our immune system is gonna trigger to try to compensate and, and, and protect us from these toxins that are coming from our gut. And that creates a fight or flight response. So when your immune system is fighting things, we go into an adrenal response. That's the fight or flight glands. And we have 
cortisol and adrenaline, and that hyperstimulates our immune system and it hyperstimulates some of our neurotransmitters into fight or flight. So there's more anxiety and less focus. It's really, it really kind of goes around and around and around. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy the way that most people eat in this country. Even people who are thinking that they're eating a healthy diet are oftentimes exposed to things that disrupt the way our gut works. So it's, you know, that's the bad part. The good part is when you start taking away some of the foods that trigger our enemy in response and you heal the leaky gut, and Joanne's got some wonderful products in the store that helps to do that, then um, the gut barrier gets, gets better and the toxic exposure in our, in our body gets better. And when we, that's that part of it. And then our whole body starts to calm down. Our neurotransmitters change so that we go from fight or flight, anxiety tendencies to peaceful, calm, serene. And um, so that's that part of it. And then there's something called the vagus nerve. Which Ooh, is, ooh, I love this conversation. Vagus nerve. Yes. So the vagus nerve is part of our calming down nervous system. And so if you can think about your car, you know, you drive your car, you want to go fast, you push your foot on the gas pedal. And then when you want to slow down, you put your foot on the brake. And the vagus nerve is effectively a brake to our autonomic nervous system. It keeps us calm, centered, serene. It energizes or sends an electrical signal to all of our internal organs and glands liver, spleen, kidneys, um, lungs, heart, and more and more. So when our vagus nerve is working appropriately, everything in our body works uh, appropriately. We digest our food, we produce hydrochloric acid, we have pancreatic enzymes, we digest our food down, there's good peristaltic action, so the food moves through, we have good good blood flow to our digestive tract so we can absorb the nutrition. So everything really works much, much better. So it's, um, you can see when we're in a state of fight or flight, if we are under stress, that vagus nerve tends to turn down and our, our sympathetic or fight or flight part turns up. So that means that we don't digest our food as well. So we can't micronize the food droplets. They tend to ferment in the gut. We don't get the nutrition out of it. It creates more nutrition. So it, it is really important to take care of what we put into our body and how we experience life so that we can live a peaceful existence. I love it. And meditation and breath work are some of the two great things for the vagus nerve, right? Meditation, breath work. Um, you know, there's uh, some people whose vagus nerve is really having a hard time. They'll actually stimulate it with mild electrical stimulation. And we, we can do that through vagus nerve massage. I mean, there are certain points in our body that we can literally massage. There's, they're now coming out with um, retail versions of vagus nerve stimulators that you can wear that send a mild electrical signal that helps stabilize that. And um, so one breath work did you said breath work yes. you said breath work yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so um, there's another aspect of the vagus nerve we just kind of found out about only a few years ago which is that the vagus nerve has these little microtubules the tiny little tubes that run from our gut directly into our brain and that um, so if our gut and the food that we put in there and the environment in our gut with good bacteria is, is healthy then we transmit healthy compounds into our brain. If we're eating the typical American diet, or even if you think you're eating a really good diet, but some of those things aren't interacting with our immune system well, then that will send inflammatory compounds up the vagus nerve microtubules into the brain, creating inflammation in the brain, and then brain fog and all those other things that we don't want. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, and my brain is going to absorb all this information that he already talked about. So get your pen and paper ready, and we're going to go even deeper on the next segment. So we'll be right back. Is this the neurological edition of Joanne's <laughs> World of Nutrition? There you go. Okay, we will be right back. Hi, this is Joanne from Nutrition World and Wellness Center. I am really excited to introduce new guests and topics to my show every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. here on WPSL, where my listeners can call in on any topic. 
If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it. We want to help you become the best version of yourself. We'll have nature pass coaches. I am looking forward to sharing my years of experience with my listeners so we can enjoy this life journey together. Visit Joanne's Nutrition World in the Crass Square, formerly known as the Arcade Building, located at US 1 and Orange Avenue, across from Fort Pierce City Hall. Open Monday through Friday from 10 to 4, Saturdays 10 to 3. Taking appointments for the Wellness Center online at joannesnutritionworld.com or call 772-464-3598. Join Joanne Seeger as she guides the Treasure Coast to health, one person at a time, on Joanne's World of Nutrition, Wednesday mornings at 10 on WPSL. I am so excited to share with all my listeners all the cutting-edge health topics of today. I look forward to hearing from you. Remember, it's a live call-in show. Any questions you have on health and nutrition, I look forward to answering. Join us here for Joanne's World of Nutrition every Wednesday morning at 10 on WPSL. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. And now back to Joanne's World of Nutrition. Once again, here's Joanne Seeger. Hi, everyone. I am here with Dr. Christopher Allison. He's my buddy, Chris, and he is teaching us all about the brain. But if you want to spend some one-on-one time with Dr. Chris, you can make appointments at my store as well as Peggy's and Stewart. And his website that you can contact him through is Christopher Allison with two L's dot com. So Christopher Allison dot com. And you can um, make an appointment if you're local. And if not, you could probably do something virtual. You're such a wealth of knowledge, right? Yeah. But he's a busy guy, always uh, seeing clients for many years now. And he did make an incredible video for me on my website. So if you go to joannesnutritionworld.com, there is a link there that there's a four-minute video that Dr. Chris produced for us that explains how his visits work, and it's really wonderful. You really get a great understanding how his appointments work, and they're only a hundred and, well, I think it's different for different locations, so we'll discuss pricing if you call us directly, 772-464-3598. All right, so we're going to keep talking about the brain, but some of our listeners might be thinking, Chris, well, how do I know what's happening inside there? Yes, I know I have some brain fog. I know it's not as sharp as it used to be, but is it okay? Like, do I need to worry? How do you kind of get some insight about the brain when you have your appointments? <clears throat> well, um, I am currently using a machine called the mental scan. It is a full body scan. And what it does is it scans, well, your full body from your bones to your muscles to your spine to your lymph system which is very important to neurotransmitters some of the endocrine glands some of the hormones prostate ovaries and all all those kinds of things including the brain and so what i'm able to look into with the menla scan is how are different areas of the brain working are they overstimulated are they in an inflammation uh process or or are they balanced do they need nutritional support because the machine also gets to to scan for nutrition and um, so from that I get to find out where the person is and then make recommendations to bring them back into balance so they can be healthier happier live longer stronger and uh, uplifted lives and what I love about your scanner is it gives it a little grading system (laughs) so with each appointment you know, like whether you're coming back in three months, six months, or annually, you can see how you're improving if you decide to make some of these lifestyle choices that you recommend. It, it is interesting because I've, I've seen some people monthly. I mean, there are some people just come to me monthly just because they want to pick my brain and see what's going on. And um, the things that they're working on basically stay about the same and the things that they're making improvements on change. So it's a, it's a very, very consistent scanner, which I really appreciate. Some of the scanners aren't so consistent and um, it's very insightful. Very I love insightful. that. And so with the brain, what type of things are you looking for? Like I know 
oxygen's important? Mm -hmm. Like what type of things do you look for? Well, <clears throat> the brain is, is simple yet complex at the same time. We have uh, neurons and they're firing off and they have different neurotransmitters that um, interact with the neurons and stimulate different responses from the neurons. So we need to have a number of aspects of our health to go together to create a health, good, healthy brain. And that means that we get to have good circulation to our brain. So, you know, part of what the mental scan does is it scans the carotid arteries. And that is the two arteries that run up and supply blood to the brain. It scans the capillaries, which are the tiniest little blood vessels that we have. So I can see if the capillaries are perfusing blood appropriately, if the carotid arteries are allowing the blood up into the brain, which is very, very important because heart disease, we don't, you know, we, we say heart disease, but it really isn't just heart disease. You know, a heart, heart attack can take you out or, you know, give you some problems, but we have blood flow in, through our entire body. And so the idea is, is that we want to have a healthy cardiovascular system, which allows blood to flow down to your toes so there's no neuropathy and up into your brain and the capillaries of your brain so that you can perfuse blood, perfuse nutrition, and um, help stabilize our, our brain biochemistry. So the kind of the, some of the things that can get in the way of that would be, we talked a little bit about that, but it's, it's uh, inflammation. And, you know, we think about inflammation and it's a, it's a big buzzword these days. And oh, there, yeah. <laughs> everybody has heard about inflammation. So the thing is though, and this is where it gets a little bit complicated, it's simple, but it's a little complicated, is that there are many, many, many different kinds of inflammation in our body. And, um, but a lot of it comes down to immune response. And some of it comes down to whether or not we're able to get the toxins out of the tissue. And, um, and a lot of it might have to do with whether or not the mitochondria or those energy producing cells, which actually make electricities, because in order for us to move and think, we are moving and thinking by the process of creating electricity and using electricity to do all the action in our body. So it's really important to have good, healthy, electrical manufacturing mitochondria. And in order to do that, we need to support them. And we support our mitochondria through movement, nutrition, oxygen, like Joanne was saying. So let's say if the carotid arteries are getting a little bit congested and there's less blood flow or the capillaries in the brain are getting congested and there's less blood flow, there's going to be less nutrition to the brain. There's going to be less ability to pull toxins out of the brain and metabolic waste. That's, you know, the cellular respiration that all cells do. And then we're going to start to, to slow down the neurons firing and our neurotransmitters might go out of balance. And then we start having neuronal degeneration. Our brain just starts to fail. Oh, so, oh that sounds yeah. terrible. And it, it, and it is. <laughs> but the good news is, you know, they don't really talk about our ability to clear arteries, but we can absolutely clear our arteries. We can absolutely open up our capillaries and deliver blood flow to all the tissue that we need to. It just takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of knowledge, which Joanne and I help people figure out how to do that. And everybody has a different way of approaching it. So some people need specific nutrients to help to relax the blood vessels. Other people are under stress and we help them deal with stress and that helps to open up the blood vessels. Some people just need to move. <laughs> Because You're looking at me when you said that, jeez. <laughs> gazing off into space. So, um, yeah, so, you know, like I said, so many people, and I have to say for myself, I'm sitting on my butt when I'm doing these sessions all day long. And um, so when that happens, the blood has a tendency to move slowly. The capillaries tend to to constrict a bit. So just by simply going for a walk, and I see this all the time with the Mendel scan, because um, I do a little bit of an intake, I talk about their life and what do you do? I says, oh yeah, I walk around the neighborhood after dinner for a half an hour every day. Inevitably, those people's capillary systems in their legs are actually really, really, really good. And um, so it, it doesn't take a huge input of exercise to get a, a rather large improvement in our and our capillary function and uh, blood flow. Yeah, and it's so enjoyable. I, I remember when so many people took dinner, you know, 
walks after dinner. It was just the norm. You see people throughout the neighborhood all walking in the early evening. So we need it, to get back to that. And that would one be of, wonderful. It is wonderful. And um, fresh air. <laughs> yes, nature. Oh, those things with trees and grass. Yeah. Trees? <laughs> trees, yeah. There's still there's a few left. Now. And that's that's actually part of the reason that Europeans tend to be healthier in general, not only do so they have... So much walking. They oh walk everywhere, yeah. And yeah. hills. They have hills, not like us South Florida people. And dales. It's like, yeah. Do they have what? hills and dales or just hills? Oh, are you making fun of my New York accent? I said hills. <laughs> now I'm Southern. That's southern. All right. And Chris, I want to mention to the listeners... Um, your incredible capacity to research and also understand this technology. So not only do you use the Menlo Scan, but you use other scanning devices that really are so cutting edge. You not just use them, but you understand them. He has this really cool technology brain too. So not only as a doctor, but he has this other side of him that really understands technology and and frequencies and sound waves and all that cool cool stuff well, that's, it's a passion yeah. it's, it's a, a passion. well but that's what i mean that's why you love helping people yeah. because it's a passion and that's mm -hmm. that's what i appreciate about you so much because anything that comes along chris's desk if he doesn't understand it he starts researching so really um always tries to think outside the box so I just wanted to add that because well, yeah. some of this technology people use, but they don't really understand. Well, that's, I guess so. that's, that's true. <laughs> um, you know, for me, I, I just, I love finding out how stuff works. And it's just, it's something I think God put in me. I just cannot not research. I have to know. And, <laughs> and that, that just helps me to understand people better. And it helps me to be able to help them because generally, you know, I love people. They're my species, as they would say. That's and <laughs> I hope so, yeah. <laughs> and um, so to be able to take a person who's really having some challenges and not experiencing a, a life that they would want, and to be able to help them to get back and feel good and interact with their family and go have functions that they would like to do, it's um, very heartwarming for me. I love that. I love that. Now, you mentioned about the brain needing nutrients and making sure that your digestive system and all the absorption is running correctly. Are there certain foods that if someone was out at the grocery store right now and want to start getting some brain friendly foods, what would you suggest in this little toxic environment that there's not that many choices, but would there be some things that you would have um, them consume? Well, <clears throat> well, of course. And um, so, you know, what we, in the last 40 or 50 years, what's happened to our food supply is this has gotten more and more commer commercially produced. They're adding sugar into things that you wouldn't even consider that they would add sugar. As a matter of fact, you know, I read an article not a long time ago that uh, Subway in the UK, they are not allowed to call their bread bread because in the UK, they have certain standards that are required in order to call it bread. They add so much sugar that it is not even considered to be bread. And I'm yes, it's not even considered to be bread. Oh, I see. So they bring the Subway bread into their country. Right. And because it's so much sugar, they can't call it bread. There. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. I, mean, I get would, it. Who would okay. think that they would add sh sugar to something that's already such a high glycemic index? It, bread in general in the United States pumps our blood sugar so fast and they add even more sugar to it, which causes all sorts of problems. So um, anyways, so so really the, the idea is you want to you want to cut out all the commercially prepared foods because there are so many toxins in there, so many chemicals in there that it just doesn't work for us. You want to cut down the sugars. We are not meant to eat sugars. And um, because when we when we stimulate an insulin response, we are driving sugar into our cells. And as we're doing that, we're creating, our, our cells will have to store it. And in order to store sugar, it stores sugar as a triglyceride. And um, it jams up our, cell, our cells. And so got to get yeah. rid of the commercial food, the sugary food, and get into healthy, you know, this is going to be a very, very contradictory potentially topic. But I, the more I research what food is and what humans ate as a, as a, as a humanity back 10, 15, 20,000 years ago, we ate a significant amount of animal products. 
And I we- knew you were going there. <laughs> I love it. So we're going to keep going there because I'm right on board with you. Um, but we have a live caller. Good morning, Bob. How are you today? Sure. I'm so sorry, Bob, but they are not. Um, But again, I mentioned that Chris's schedule um, in different areas is different payment for our store. It's 149 and we consider that very reasonable for a whole hour with um, a holistic doctor. So, and you get the scan included. So I would definitely um, consider that the I don't know what do you um, what are the words I'm trying to say. So in like for instance, like some copays now are $120. So we try to make it as reasonable as possible for people that it's are using value. it with their insurance. A value, yes, a value, with no side effects. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are side effects. Good health and vitality. Say that again, Bob. That's right, and exactly. that's that's the key. That's the key. So. Well, not only preventative, I mean, there, there's a significant amount of preventative um, medicine involved or holistic health involved, but also we can help, if a person has a diagnosed disease, we can back that off oftentimes into being healthy again. So it's not just preventative, you can also correct disease processes. Oh, I like that. Correct disease processes. It was legal and it was really good. Yeah, (laughs) I love that. So, Bob, definitely um, check out Dr. Chris. Um, Like I mentioned, he comes to our store two times a month um, in other locations as well. And his website is ChristopherAllison.com. Sound good? All right. Thanks, Bob. Have a great day. All right. So... I'm right on board with what you were talking about having, um, I have been following some of the doctors that promote, um, I don't know, promotes the right word, um, research, the carnivore lifestyle, Mm. and boy, is it convincing. I tell you what. It's really (laughs) convincing, and the one doctor, 14 years that he's been following a strict carnivore um, and and very optimal health, uh, so I'm kind of glad that we're exploring that. You know, when, when you think about what humans had to eat 15, 20,000 years ago, most of what you're going to see in the grocery store, really, it wasn't even then there then. Um, broccoli, there, we didn't have broccoli. We did not have cauliflower. We did not have kale. The carrots were different. Corn was significantly different. And so the vast majority of what humans ate were animal products with some bugs and um, (laughs) fruits and nuts and berries and stuff like that but really significant amounts of animal products so um and the advantage of that is is that when the animals are raised in nature they're healthy they've got really good vital fats which a lot of people think oh my god fat is bad for you because if you listen to what the CDC says about it is going to clog your arteries and it's going to give you all sorts of cancer problems. And the reality is is that we are very fatty people, not just fat around the midsection, but that's typically caused by stress and sugar. But our cell membranes have a dual layer fatty membrane uh, and our brain is fatty and we need to have these (gasps) metabolic and uh, physical structural fats in order to be healthy. So it just so happens that when we're eating animals, we get a good balance of protein, which we need. And um, I'm very convinced that what the, the medical profession is su- suggesting we need is far, far, far lower than is optimal. So particularly as we get older, you know, we get to be 50, 60, 70 years old and you start seeing people, they're starting to get that slump. They're starting to walk bad. They're got their hips that are... <laughs> Yeah, Joanne and I are like, we're going to sit up right now. Yep, change the posture. And um, so as as our hormones go down, particularly women after menopause, it really affects the way that our body is able to regenerate and rebuild itself. So we need the fats, we need the proteins, you know, the the vegetables are going to have some fibers and stuff to help our bacteria. So... Um, I am I am for an omnivore diet. I've seen some people that are having immune problems when they go into carnivore. They just completely sort out, and they are amazing. I don't think anybody needs to be a straight carnivore except those people, potentially. <laughs> and you know they may be able to balance their immune system to the point where they can tolerate other foods. But 
when we're eating a good amount of vegetables and healthy animal products, we seem to work more efficiently, build our body, we're stronger, we have more reserves, and we live happier, healthier, stronger lives. Yes, that, that's so well said, and in the condensed version, there are so many YouTube videos um, that go over the carnivore philosophy. And one thing I, I always mention, I have many customers that are vegans, and and if that works for your body, you'll know. But unfortunately, what I think Chris and I are both seeing is that the vegetarian diet has so much toxic exposure that they're feeling, you know, tired, brain fog, um, and cravings, and the food is never enough. It's like always needs to be subsidized with sweets or with coffee or tea. And, and that's really not what a healthy body feels like. It's not like craving something like more, more, more feeling. And I don't know. There are, there are some doctors out there, their tagline is, is that plants are trying to kill you. And uh, if you think about it, um, there's some there's some potential truth there. Um, animals, you know, if you see a gazelle in Africa and a lion is chasing it, it will run like the dickens. Or a, a bunny away from a coyote, it'll run like the dickens because nothing really wants to be eaten. <laughs> and so these plants, they um, they can't run. So their defense mechanism is they create these digestive disturbing toxins that when an animal eats it, it says, oh man, that's not good for my belly, and it'll eat something else instead. Now, humans have gotten fairly well adapted to a lot of these toxins, and you won't really hear much of a problem of the Europeans, but then, or the Middle Eastern people, or the Russian people, or people who eat more naturally a wider variety of food that's grown well, but in the United States, we're exposed to so much that our immune system is triggered by so many of these foods that we would consider healthy. And just as, a, as that it that it really does create problem for a lot of people. So Definitely. as a as a side note is I've had uh, doing the mental scan, I've had now seven people and that didn't want to tell me what they were doing. They just wanted me to run the scan and about halfway through the scan. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? This is amazing. And all those seven people said they were carnivore their nutrition was stable their ph was stable this whole acid alkaline balance thing and eating animals is going to cause acidity and it's going to ruin your bones is a total crock of um it is <clears throat> something. Yeah, absolutely absolutely <laughs> they were yeah. the, some of the healthiest people that i have seen and i remember the one customer that um, i sent into your office he had you said the highest score and he was a carnivore yep. him and his wife yes so incredible. I, so I personally, you know, I, I can work with anybody's dietary preferences and I, I work with vegetarians and I work with paleo people and I work with carnivores. So and people like me, guys, he understands that we're all human. So like, you know, despite my laziness and my sedentariness, <laughs> he doesn't judge me. So whether you're perfect or not, Dr. Chris can help you adjust your pathway. <laughs> well, my perspective is everybody is perfect. That's right. There we go. We all just have habits that could be improved. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And that's what you're human and, and you understand that. And I love that. There's no judgment. It's just kind of like, let's redirect a little here and there. And so if you want to check out Chris, um, ChristopherAllison.com. Again, um, using cutting edge devices and hour appointments. I mean, when's the last time you got to sit down with your doctor for an hour and talked about your life? Like what lifestyle to and do? And actually yeah. get answers. Yeah. I've yeah. had so many people that come to me and they'll, they'll say that they spent tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars, got no answers. And within a half an hour with me, they were able to figure out what was going on and make the changes to help them be well again because you listened. What a concept, right? And if you're wondering um, if you're on a lot of prescriptions and you have gone down that medical pathway, that's okay because you can bring them with you, bring your blood work with you, or if you're really um, into supplements, bring those with you. We don't care whether you bought them at our store or not. Um, just kind of fill that Publix bag and plop him on his desk and he sorts through it with you. I mean, how amazing is that? So all that confusion or brain fog, ha ha. Um, we are talking about the brain, right? So yes, so um, definitely check out uh, Chris because wealth of knowledge. 
So for the last few minutes, um, Chris, for the brain, so um, vagus nerve, calming, meditation, what's some three minutes closing comments you can talk about for the brain? Um, <clears throat> well, it's really kind of simple, which is basically we, we got to get rid of the things that are creating an inflammatory response in our body. If we're creating inflammation, taking some supplements will help but it's not going to get you to where you want to go. So we got to take out the things that are creating a problem and add in the things that'll help to balance us out. So, um, and that really, that really comes down to eating a healthy diet that doesn't trigger your immune system, move your body around to get circulation. Um, part of what I do is see, it's not all about diet, although it's a huge thing. Sometimes people are carrying latent viral infections, funguses, yeasts, heavy metals, toxins, pesticides. So my job is to find out what it is that's getting in the way of your metabolic health so that we can take that away and then give you the nutrition to um, bring back strength and vitality to the systems that had been shut down. Wow. Okay. That's perfect. You should put that on your website. That was really good. <laughs> yes. So again, um, anything is possible. You know, you just have to really believe in the possibilities of healing. Um, to me, that's the first step, you know, just the belief that you are miraculous. And sometimes if you get your mind out of the way, <laughs> you know, healing can begin. So Chris and I work really well together at the store, just trying to make things um, easy to understand, possible, affordable, um, and just get you um, started. And so just uh, check us out and whether you call um, or check out the website or that four minute informational video, um, just please, it's a really good investment in your health. And I really appreciate Chris, you have such a busy schedule. I really appreciate you spending some time with me this morning. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And I do wanna mention, we also have in our wellness center, a sound healing bed and that is so cool and guess who made it dr chris yes i went to him with this idea and i said i really want this bed it's it's supposed to be incredible for you know helping uh, relax and like we talked about the vagus nerve just help get that chaotic energy out of your body and just help the body just feel um, in homeostasis and so he created the bed for me everyone loves it when they go on it um, they just come off and say wow that was such an incredible experience so it's only $35 a session or you can get 10 sessions for $250 so if you want to check it out at our, our wellness center you can book online um, so really that's another great thing that you have done so I thank you for that as well it was fun Right, I know, because you love learning. All right, everyone, I'm cutting off. Bye. Bye, Take Chris. Take care. Bye. You've been listening to Joanne's World of Nutrition, presented by Nutrition World every Wednesday morning in the 10 a.m. hour on WPSL, Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast, webcaster to the world, where the time right now is 11 o'clock.